Hey there, in this video, we will see a reverse proxy and load balancing in Nginx. First, let us try to understand what reverse proxy is. Let's say you have your Nginx serving requests on localhost and you have an API server that is hosted on a separate domain, a separate server, or maybe hosted on the same server on different port. If you want to render the response from this API server on your Nginx path, let's say slash API, then this mechanism is known as reverse proxy. So let's say you have an Nginx serving requests on localhost. You have an API server uh, running on localhost, let's say at port 3000, and you want to host an API on the nginx on a path called slash api and render the response from the api server in this case what you need to do is you need to create the location block and use a directive called proxy pass in this example you see i have a location block slash api and that is proxy passing it to some domain and port you notice the trailing slash here so what it does is whatever is there in your location block that is slash API is replaced with slash on your remote server. That is if your request looked like localhost slash API, then that would render the response from the domain colon port and slash that is at the root. Similarly, if you had not put the trailing slash and you had the same location block that is slash API, then in that case, this slash API would get replaced at the end and the target server call would look like domain colon port slash that location path. Okay, so let us look this in action. So what I will do is I'll move to my terminal. Okay, so I have my terminal, uh, I have three blocks created here basically in order to showcase the load balancing that we will see in some time i have an api server that is running on port 3000 so let's say if i do a local host colon 3000 you will see i'm getting a response saying response from server one okay now what i want is i want to create a path on the nginx let's say slash API, which would render the response from this API server that is running on port 3000 on the localhost machine. In order to do so, we need to create the location block and the proxy pass as we saw a couple of minutes back. But before that, let's just try that, right? So if I have localhost running on port 80 and I want slash API to render the response, in this case, I'm getting 404 not found because we have not defined anything as of now. So let's go and define the same. Okay, so I will go to my nginx.conf file, uh, which is located in slash etc nginx directory. I have cleaned up everything here and I have a plain blank HTTP and the server block. Okay, so we define the location block, let's say slash API and the proxy pass directive, which says whatever request comes on slash API, redirect it to localhost colon 3000. And I put a trailing slash because I want this slash API to be routed to the root of the server. In case I had not put this trailing slash, then this same would have got appended and the request would look like localhost colon 3000 slash API along with whatever additional parameters that you have you pass in your request. Okay, so I save this, I go back to my terminal and we do a reload. If everything is good, you will get an okay. So now let us go and try out the same 
request that is localhost slash API. Okay, so as you see, I have access slash API on the Nginx and that has rendered the response from our API server. Good, so this is what reverse proxying is. With this, what you make is, you abstract your underlying servers from your end users, right? So you have some kind of a path on your domain and you make a call to that and within it, the Nginx will forward that request to the necessary services as defined by you and render the response on the same path, okay? So this is basically what most of the time happens when you use the Nginx ingress controller in Kubernetes. Right, you have different microservices that runs on different port and you then create your definitions which will forward the requests on your actual domain path to your underlying microservices. Okay, so this is basically what is reverse proxy. Next, let us look at load balancer. Okay, load balancing is very important, especially when you want to load balance the requests coming in from your users so that just one server is not getting hit badly. Okay, so for that, what we do is we define something known as an upstream. Okay, so we need to define something known as an upstream. You provide the name and define all these servers that should be part of that group. So just consider API servers is a group and these are the servers that constitutes the group, okay? So in order to reference this, you just reference this name in your proxy pass and that's it. The Nginx will then load balance the request in a round robin fashion. Let us see this in action, okay? So what I will do is in order to test this, I will just create a loop, let's say while slip for 0 0.5, do curl localhost and done, okay? So before running this, let us just simplify our Nginx configuration, okay? So what I will do is, I will ensure, I'll remove the slash API, I'll keep the root itself, okay? and we will see the response coming in from each server. So let's say localhost colon 3000 gives me response from server one. Similarly, okay, so I need to start. So I will start my other two servers. So basically I have three API servers running now. One on port 3000, other on 3001 and 3003. Okay, so let's make it 3002 so that everything is incremental great so let us try this 3001 returns response from server 2 3002 from response from server 3 perfect so as of now what we have is if you look at the configuration i just have slash and i have proxy pass with 3000 okay so if I reload the configuration and run that while loop that we had created some time back and execute, you will see I'm getting response from just one server, which is correct, right? Because we have not yet defined the upstream servers and we have not configured the load balancing, okay? So what we will do is define the upstream, okay? So to define the upstream, you need to use upstream the group name which we will call api servers use this server directory and give the address so i have three that is localhost 3000 localhost 3001 and server localhost 3002 okay so once we have defined this server i just need to reference this using API servers. Okay, great. So I save it, we'll 
come out from there let's reload our configuration everything is good let's run okay if you see now you are getting the response in a round robin fashion and the request is load balanced between our three servers that we have defined that is on 3000 3001 and 3002 port if any of these server goes down let's say i server one goes down right so you will see the request is now automatically balanced between server two and server three okay so you don't need to do anything nginx is smart enough to balance the request based on the liveliness of the server as you see here the requests are load balanced but in most of the cases you will want the user request to go to a particular server right that is let's say if a user's request goes to server one then we would want all the subsequent requests to also go to server one right this use case is quite normal because when a user is authenticated maybe there is some state that is served on the or saved on the server and if the subsequent request goes to the other server then those state will not be found and the user might be prompted to log in again which may not give a good user experience hence you would want some kind of stickiness wherein if the user's request has gone to a particular server then we would want all the further requests to also go to that server unless the server goes down right so in order to do that you just need to add a directive here called ip underscore hash okay once you add it reload okay and run your loop again as you see now all the requests are going to the same server because we have enabled stickiness using the ip underscore hash function okay now if the server goes down you see that the request is now going to a different server and once it comes back sorry i need to start the server okay and you see it has now gone back to the server which was first initialized or which was the stickiness preserved right so nginx does everything for you and you don't need to do any complex configuration or change your application to handle these things okay similar to this there are much more configurations that you can use like um, least connections etc and that can be referenced in the documentation of the nginx okay so that's all i wanted to share in this video i hope this was useful if it was then please do like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't i will be making more such videos in future which will help you out with different mechanisms and different strategies that we can have with nginx till then happy learning bye bye